Hello, everyone. I'm Jun. I'm very glad to join the Open Source Summit Europe. Uh, my topic today is how to accelerate ex approximate nearest neighbor search for a large scale data set. This is in 101 for our project Mulus. By creating this new infrastructure software for AI, we believe we have helped to make AI technologies more accessible to every people so that everyone can utilize AI technologies to empower themselves. Uh, first, let me introduce myself. Um, I'm Jingu, Zilla's partner, technical evangelist. I'm also a voting member of the uh, uh, Technic Advisory Community at the uh, Arab AI Foundation. Before joining Zillis, I help for I, uh, I work for ICBC, IBM, Morgan Stanley, and Huawei. I had been a database engineer for 14 years. Uh, in these two years, I turned to act as a uh, database product manager, and also I'm the uh, technology evangelist of the Mirrors project. Um, who is Zillis? Um, Zillis is the abbreviation for Zillion of Zillions. So you can know by name that we are engaged in data related technology. Uh, we are a technology startup. Um, we focus on developing data science software uh, based on uh, heterogeneous computing. We drive our software business models through open source. Our vision is to reinvent data science, um, which means we are aim to provide data related technologies for the new domain, the new scenario and the new requirement. Uh, we want to help people better discover the value contained in data. Our open source project Mulvas joined the RFAI Foundation as an incubation project earlier this year. So now Zillis is um, a major contributor of the uh, Mulvas project. Okay, let's get into the topic. Um, we generally divided the data into three categories. The first is structured data, including numbers, dates, strings, and so on. Uh, the second one is semi-structured data, mainly includes that text information with a certain format, such as various system blocks. Uh, the third is so-called unstructured data, like uh, pictures, video, voice, natural language text. Uh, these are not easy to be understood by the uh, computer. Relational database, traditional uh, big data, these technologies are to solve the problem of structured data. And uh, uh, for semi-structured data, uh, people have uh, a text-based search engine, uh, but only for the unstructured data, which accounts for 80% of the uh, total data sphere, has been lacking in effective analytic methods in the past. Uh, until the rise of AI deep learning technology in recent years, unstructured data processing is accelerated. So the charm of deep learning model is that it can convert uh, the unstructured information, which originally the computer is difficult to understand to, into the feature information here, the embedding vectors. Um, so the analysis of unstructured data is transforming to vector computation. How do people usually use AI technologies to analysis unstructured data? Uh, as shown here, uh, it's a uh, so-called flow-based application. So AI application is, um, this is a typical example. Assuming we have, uh, we are going to uh, analyze a video, we can create some operation streams, usually called pipelines. Uh, the leftmost pipeline uh, captures the video uh, frames and then extract the feature from the captured image. Here, for example, we can use the uh, VGG model a model with excellent general, generalization capability. At last, we've got the major feature vectors here. Uh, the middle pipeline, the middle pipeline handles sound. Eventually, it generates audio vectors that are converted from the sound. And then the rightmost 
pipeline automatically labels some attributes uh, for the video. So if you have other special requirements, uh, we can build a new pipeline to do related processing. Uh, this is why flow-based AI applications are so popular because they are flexible. Uh, and the developer don't even have to write code. There are web-based interface to help users to uh, compose the new process. If you have no idea how to start, you can even find some uh, useful samples. Uh, but in this way, it also brings us a new data challenge. The data becomes very fragmented. It was originally only one video, but at last, with the uh, operation of the pipelines, it was gradually transformed into different data spread in different corners. So what shall we do? Um, let's turn to a more traditional hierarchical view. Um, so uh, this is a uh, AI application to process and structure data. The top of this uh, layer and the uh, bottom of the layer, they are all unstructured data. Um, <clears throat> AI technologies mainly uh, works in these two middle two layers. Uh, the green layer, uh, which is called the inference layer, uh, and the blue layer, uh, which I call it a data service layer. Uh, the task of model serving uh, is to transform unstructured data into uh, feature vectors models. These models are uh, pre-trained, but serving them uh, efficiently is still not easy. Uh, the good news is uh, there are already some mature projects in the industry, such as uh, NVIDIA's TensorRT, uh, Intel's OpenVINO, uh, Microsoft Onyx RT, uh, Google TensorFlow's uh, TFRT. Um, but there is no comprehensive solution for the data service layer at this part. Some people put a uh, vector in a structured database. Others, uh, they, some, they, will, they might put the vectors in HDFS and then analysis these uh, uh, vectors through Spark. Also, you can use some AN libraries. So in this area, everyone make their attempts. The challenge is how to uh, manage and analyze the vectors efficiently. Although a large number of uh, pre-trained models are not available, but AI technology is still difficult to go production because at the data service layer, uh, the cost is still high. So um, to address this challenge, uh, our answer is to build up the unstructured data service powered by the uh, Milvus project. It contains uh, four parts here. Uh, the first part is the uh, embedding similarity search to serve the vectors. Um, <clears throat> so it, it includes uh, high dimension uh, vectors in deep learning scenarios, and also it supports the sparse vectors in traditional machine learning scenario. The second part is the um, attribute for the, or the Scala data. For example, a label described by uh, structured data like streams. So combine the attributes and the uh, uh, vectors, we can provide the capability of hybrid search or collaborative search. So which means you can uh, use the attribute filtering uh, when you do the uh, vector search. The third part is to support multimodals. Uh, as in the previous example, a video has uh, vectors of different dimensions. There are image vectors and uh, there are audio vectors. So in the real world, the multimodal search is a common requirement. So then we need to introduce the concept of entity for the unstructured data. An entity could contain multiple uh, multiple vectors of different dimensions. The first part is the scoring component. In some scenarios, like multimodal search, because we introduce different models, 
then the fully connected layer of different models will need to be fused to form a new scoring mechanism for the analysis of unstructured data. Uh, at present, uh, Milvas already has built up the uh, vector analysis capability. Uh, we are constantly improving and enhancing it. Uh, we are currently uh, actually by this time, uh, by the time you see this video, uh, the uh, attribute filtering function should be available already. And for multimodal search and scoring search, they are on the roadmap. Uh, in a future release, we will we will uh, uh, we will uh, put this functionality in a higher priority. So eventually, Milvas is not just uh, uh, positioned to be a high performance vector search engine. So we want to build a comprehensive infrastructure software for unstructured data service based on Milvas. Okay, so maybe you have been convinced that we needed an unstructured data service, uh, but why not build it through relational database or big data technology? Uh, a vector also looks like a number. What's the difference between a vector and a number? Uh, to be precise, a vector consists of a set of numbers. The difference between vector and a number, um, I think uh, there are two major aspects. Uh, first, the common operation of vectors and the numbers are different. For numbers, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and the division is the most common operation. But for vectors, the most common operation is to calculate the similarity. So you see here, I'm giving, I'm giving the formula of computing utility and distance. And the computation of vector, you can see here, is much higher than the normal numeric calculation. Secondly, the index organization of data is different. So between two numbers, the value can be compared with each other. So we could create the number uh, index based on the algorithm like B-tree, uh, for example, here. Uh, but between two vectors, uh, we cannot perform the comparison. Um, <clears throat> we can only calculate the similarity between them. So the vector index is usually uh, based on algorithm like uh, approximate nearest neighbor AN algorithm. So here I give two AN approach, clustering index, clustering index, and graph index. Because of this significant difference, the tradition database and the big data technology are difficult to meet the requirements of vector analysis. The algorithms they support, the scenarios they target are all different. So that's why we try to build the Mulvers project to serve the uh, unstructured data, the embedding vectors. So, here is the big picture of Milvus. I want to highlight four parts. Uh, the first major part is the uh, support of the uh, heterogeneous computing. So I mentioned earlier, our company is developing data so science software based on heterogeneous computing. Uh, so we have ex experience in this area. The team has ex experts in the CUDA programming and the uh, uh, same programming. Uh, so during Milvus design, we thought about how to support different computing resources uh, so that we could accelerate such a computation intensive scenario. Um, the heterogeneous computing resources supporting Milvus, uh, including, uh, for example, the SSE instruction site for x86. Um, mainly AVX2, AVX512, and also uh, NVIDIA GPU, uh, ARM processor, but it, it requires 64-bit ARM processor. And also uh, we are working with our partner to port Mubus into a RISC-V uh, uh, processor, but in a very early stage. Uh, the second part is the data management function. Uh, 
we want to provide the unstructured data service. So the function of data management is critical. Um, MUVA supports data partition, data sharding, deletion of vectors, and also stream injection. And then the third is the adoption and the improvement of the AN algorithm libraries. The capability of vector search is the uh, fundamental function in unstructured data service. So MUVAS can provide a good vector search performance bit, uh, by adopting and improving the well-known AN algorithm libraries like Flace, Annoy. Uh, the first part is uh, support for appli application development environment. To enable AI developers to build the applications on MUVAS, we provide several application development environments like a uh, uh, Python, C++, Java, Go, uh, REST, uh, API, etc. Although MUVAS is a server more complicated than the uh, algorithm library, uh, but people are very curious about the performance comparison since performance impacts the hardware cost. And they want to uh, set an expectation when they start to use MUVAS. Uh, so we have run through the AN benchmark. Uh, it is a set of well-known AN benchmark tests. Uh, thanks to Martin, Eric, Alec for developing the benchmarks. Uh, we focused it on GitHub and run through the test on Movers in several different public cloud environments like AWS, Azure, Alivin, and we also run the tests on our local machines. Uh, here, I only captured one chart of MUVA's performance. Uh, the benchmark tests generate a bunch of reports. So you can find the details on our website, MUVA's.io. Since the original AN benchmarks only use uh, one CPU core during the test, uh, we have made some modification so that MUVA's could use all the 16 CPU cores in this example. So here you can see um, uh, one million, uh, on one million vectors, uh, MUVAS can reach almost uh, 2,000 QPS on a single machine, on a single cloud machine with 16 CPU cores. So in order to boost the performance of AI and search, uh, we have spent effort on um, tuning the algorithm, finding the best parameters, and also utilizing the modern hardware. So here, I will show one example about uh, how we utilizing AVX1512 uh, instruction set to acceler accelerate ANN search. Uh, the paradox in ANS is search elapsed time and the memory consumption. Uh, usually, Faster ANS algorithm like graph type index, uh, they will consume more memory, which means uh, they will have challenges when we have a large data set to deal with. So to shrink the memory footprint, uh, we will typically have, have to use certain kind of compression and encoding techniques, but it will introduce more computing workload which means it will be slower. So um, in this example, we compare the IVF flat index and the IVF SQ8. SQ stands for scalar quantization. It's a kind of uh, compression. So you can see um, when using the AVX2 uh, instruction set, the, the index with compression is uh, slower than the uh, index with, with no compression. So uh, you, have to, you have to make the trade-off. You want a faster speed or you want a small memory footprint. So usually IVS, IVF SQ8 only takes around one third of memory consumption than the IVF flat index. So uh, we now we add the AVX512 support. So you can see here with the AVX512 instruction set, we get very obvious performance improvement 
on both index with compression or without compression. But especially for the index with compression like IVFSQ8, um, the AVX, AVX512 improvement is much more than the uh, in, index with, without compression because the index with compression, uh, they will uh, incur more CPU workload. So it will be uh, significantly improved. And uh, now you can see uh, with a much smaller memory footprint, the IVFS SQ8 index also uh, get a very good performance compared to the uh, index without compression, especially if you want to, to do this uh, uh, batch query, like we gather 100 query uh, requests together to, to, to compute, to do the search, you'll get a very significant significant improvement in this scenario. So now Mulas could help users to achieve faster search with lower memory consumption. Uh, so uh, in this test, uh, we are using Mulas uh, 0.10.3. Uh, it's running on Ubuntu. Uh, we tested this uh, uh, two-way uh, Intel server. It's Intel Plantum A163. Uh, the data set is a 100 million vectors uh, extracted from the CIF 1 billion. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's why heterogeneous computing is so powerful in AI applications. Uh, now let's take a look on how Mulvers manages embedding data. Uh, the current release of Mulvers we are working on is uh, 0 0.11. So in this release, we will change the way how Mulvers loads the data into the memory. Here is the uh, behavior before uh, 0 0.11. Uh, once the size of the data file exceeds the threshold of index file size parameter. Mulvers will trigger the index building process uh, for this new file slice. The index file shown here is an IVF index. It consists of two parts. The first part is the collection of centroid. The, uh, the number of centroid is defined by the index parameter a list. Uh, every centroid has two pointers which point to the beginning and the end of each inverted list. So the second part is the index entries, which also is the uh, in inverted list. To improve the IO performance, we increase the data locality here. So a vector in the same inverted list are stored closely uh, in this box. So Mulva slows the data index file into the memory with the same structure as it is on disk. Now, uh, this is how it will work in 0 0.11 for the IVF index without compression. Uh, for example, the IVF flat index. Uh, since we will add the attribute support in uh, 0 0.11, now for each embedding, there could be multiple files, uh, including the file for vector, the file for vectors, data, and the files for attributes. Each attribute will have its own data file. So this data file is only for one attribute. So we can define up to uh, 64 attributes for an embedding. Uh, these files are aligned through the offset. So once the size of the data file exceeds the uh, threshold of index file size, Milvus will trigger the index building process for this new file. Uh, and an index file is still consists of two parts. Uh, first is the uh, centroid information. Second is the offset of the vectors instead of the offset vector data before. So you can see here, we only uh, store uh, the offset. When Mulvers loads the data file, uh, 
into memory, now the memory data structure will be split into the uh, uh, index part and the data part. The index part contains the centroid uh, from the index file. Uh, the data part, the data part, uh, it holds the uh, actual vector information. So you can see here, Milvus will reorder Milvus will reorder the data in memory to improve the I/O performance. So originally, it's uh, the, the, the the sequence of vector in the data file is uh, the inserted time, like you have one, two, three, four. But when it's loaded into the memory, uh, Milvus will reorder this uh, will re reorder the vector sequence based on the offset here. So it will have better data locality. In memory, uh, since the original vector data are now cached in memory, then when we evoke the uh, uh, interface to retrieve the original vector data, it will be much faster than before because uh, before we didn't uh, cache the uh, vector data uh, in memory. So every time you want to get a uh, original value of the vector data, you have to go through the uh, file on the disk but in 0 0.11 it will be pretty fast and also for the attribute files uh, it will be loaded into memory uh, the same way as the uh, vector vector data file so this is how it will work in uh, 0 0.11 for the IV index IVF index with compression. For example, the IVF SQ index and the IVF PQ index. So the difference uh, is for the compressed index, we will store the uh, encoded vector data. This is the uh, encoded vector data into the index file. And in the runtime memory data structure, we won't cache the uh, original vector data in memory. So this part uh, will be loaded into the memory as the index part. And for the data part, it will be loaded into memory and then reordered. So you can see here uh, the difference in the in-memory data structure uh, for IVF index with compression, Milvus will, will, will not cache the original vector value. Uh, so if you want to get the original vector data, uh, it will still have to go through the disk file. So uh, it will be slower than the IVF index without compression in this case. So you, you have to make your decision which one is more uh, suitable for your scenario. Okay, so um, this is our project journey. Uh, this is how Milvus was born. Uh, the initial idea of this project was October uh, 2018. That time we were involved in a uh, project we needed to deliver the vector uh, search function. Uh, we tried to do it in our structured database, but it didn't fit well. That's why we started to think about this challenge seriously. So um, April 2019, we released the Milvus 0.1 and we tested it in our first seed user and improved Milvus a lot. So Milvus 0.5 was the release when we were ready to open source it. So now Milvus is an incubation project in the Airfit AI Foundation. Today, Milvus is the most active project from the uh, software development pr perspective in Linux AI Foundation. Um, so here is the uh, current status of the Milvus project. Uh, we have made near 6,000 commits and 16 release, and we have uh, hundreds of 
community users. Some of them have already put Milvus in production. Um, Milvus is a young project, less than one year. Oh, sorry, almost one year um, since it become um, open source. So why did people start to build their AI applications up upon Milvus? I think the most attractive benefits of Milvus are first, it's easy to use and it's fast, which means lower hardware cost. So developer could make the minimal viable product at a pretty low cost with Milvus. So now I will share some real world uh, use, use cases. Okay, uh, the first one is an intelligent writing assistant. Uh, this application is uh, supposed to help people to compose some kind of essay, uh, like a year-end work summary, cover letter, or refer referral letter. The software vendor, uh, they first collect a bunch of corporate data. After cleansing these data, they are encoding, uh, encoded with text CNN uh, to extract the paragraph and summary. Then uh, they will further encode the uh, encode this uh, corpus data with InfoSent model. At last, uh, we will get the vectors, the invading vectors of the uh, natural language paragraph, and the, they they are stored in Mubus. So when any user uh, submits the writing request, uh, it will go through the InfoSent encoder and perform a vector search in Mubus. Uh, the search result will be further transferred to a draft and get back to the user. So they can make some necessary modification and uh, uh, they will get a, 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 a essay pretty quick. This is a very, very useful uh, small tool. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I tried it in my work year end work summary. <laughs> Uh, the second example is a big data technology, big data technology company. Uh, they have collected a lot of corporate credit data, including uh, 55 million trademark images. They want to provide their members uh, with the function about uh, search a company through the trademark image. So they build the image search function upon the fine-tuned VGG model and Mubus. Since nobody knows how many people will become their new member uh, just for this new AI function. So the development and the hosting cost is very sensitive. So they are very happy with the performance Mubus provided. So you can see here uh, with 55 million images, they serve on a cloud GPU server. Uh, the average query response time is about 20 milliseconds. So in the previous two examples, um, AI technology is not creating the core value of the whole application. They are more like a value add. But in this example, an efficient vector search is creating the core value. This is a pharmaceutical user. Uh, we first translated, uh, we first translated the molecule expression into a uh, uh, 1024 uh, bits um, string. It's a binary string with only uh, one and zero and store it in a Milva server. Then the user could perform the, uh, uh, the molecule uh, analysis, similarity analysis, including tiny model similarity to compare two molecules uh, if they are uh, similar, and also uh, substructure to see uh, if they can provide just one piece of the molecular formula to see uh, we, 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 which molecules contain this uh, substructure, and also superstructure in, a, in another way. So uh, previously with a Spark cluster to perform this kind of analysis, it will take around uh, 14 seconds for 
30 million molecules. Uh, but with MUVAS, we can now analyze over 800 million molecules within one second, actually 500 milliseconds on a single server. So this is almost 1,000 times faster than before. Okay, uh, now it's come to the end of my presentation. Uh, here are the useful links for the MUVAS project. If you want to explore the possibility of introducing AI technology into your applications, uh, please think about MUVAS, it will be very helpful. So you can find our uh, documentation, the benchmark reports on our uh, project website, milvas.io, and uh, this is our uh, GitHub repo. Uh, you can also follow us on the uh, Twitter, and we have a publication, media publication. We, we, we post our technology blog onto this uh, medium publication. Uh, and also, we now enable the discussions function on GitHub. So if you have any question you want to discuss, you can uh, post the question on our uh, GitHub uh, discussions. So yeah, we welcome people to join the Mewas com community. Uh, thank you for listening to this session. <laughs>